Building a CCNP Home Lab When I put this list together, I had one goal in mind, and that is the biggest bang for your buck. When you get into the CCNP, there is a whole gamut of topics that are thrown at you. However, you can divide those topics into two categories. Core topics, like this is day to day, just about every network uses these, and fringe topics. Let me give you a quick example. Cisco 3550 switch, what an amazing, I have two of them sitting right here uh, by my foot. Uh, layer 3 switching, uh, first hop redundancy protocols like HSRP, VRRP, GLBP, I mean, just amazing stuff that this switch can do. Those things that I just listed off, core topics. Private VLANs, not something this switch can do, not what I would consider a core topic. In my life, I've been in one network environment that has used private VLANs, and it was one that I set up for fun. Now, your mileage may vary, but I'm just talking about the CCNP in general. There is not a ton of, of weight given to private VLANs. Okay, so with that in mind, here's my suggestion. Two of these, two of these, one of these, two of these. Put those together into a rack and you have yourself a CCNP home lab. 2600 XM routers, you get the like 2611, 2621, those, those kind of things. Great routers, huge feature set. These guys right here uh, work well as like a frame relay switch that you can configure everything to connect to as a hub. These guys, for a cost-effective uh, method, give you an integrated service router. I mean, when you're looking for feature set and a lot of the features that just some of the lower end, I shouldn't say lower end, but old Older platforms don't support, this guy will have. A couple quick tips on buying. When you're going on eBay to purchase these devices, you'll find people selling a complete CCNP lab kit, which is great because you get to buy it all from one place. However, all that person probably did is buy it individually, make it look all pretty, photograph it, and now they're selling it to you for a markup. And that, that's very convenient. It saves you the time of having to shop around and buy the devices individually, but you will pay a little bit more. Okay, what do you pay? impossible because by the time you hear this, who knows, prices may have gone up or gone down or whatever, but I would guesstimate today, which is January, uh, actually February of 2013, uh, we could probably get the, I mean, if you're a, a pretty ninja savvy shopper around $300 for all of these devices that I've told you, again, if you're savvy, if you just want to get them quick, you could probably uh, pick them up for a little bit more. Okay, now what about the things you need? You need some cables to connect these things together. My standby place nowadays, I love this place is monoprice.com. No, I don't get any money for recommending this place, but I should. Uh, right here, if you type in Cisco, you can see they have uh, Cisco serial cables, really good quality. Also, if you want to browse through their, their networking section, they have Ethernet cables, just at amazing prices, so you can pick some stuff up from there. Serial ports, you want to make sure that you get some WIC 1T modules for these guys, the 2600XM, which are your serial ports that go in. Now, I'm actually seeing right here in this graphic, if you look really close, that's a WIC uh, 2T, which is an amazing invention from Cisco because they squeeze two serial ports onto one module. However, uh, more expensive, cables are more expensive, not as common as these things that you can find everywhere. Grab a serial module like an NM4AS or even an NM8AS, which are serial ports that you can put into that 3620 or 3640 and use it as a frame relay hub. This is an NM4AS. They're very low speed, but for a lab environment, that's all you need, where you can connect four devices to that and you can configure it as a frame relay switch or just a central hub, whatever you want to do. Right over there is an NM8AS. Now, we should have put this one at the beginning, purpose and curriculum, because I've seen so many people buy a bunch of Cisco gear and then it sits there. And once every couple months, they power it on, plug in a console cable and change the host name because they don't know what else to do with it. You need a, a purpose. And some people buy lab guides, which are great, but then you're kind of boxed in. You have to go buy the equipment that they suggest in there. Um, I would really suggest getting a good curriculum like... Hey, CBT Nuggets CCNP track would be a great one where you're learning the concepts and as you go, you can build your own lab to where you come up with your own little ideas or scenarios to build. And that way you can put it around the equipment that you have instead of being like, oh, well, this lab requires five more routers. Let me go buy those too. Um, and last but not least, my GNS3 thoughts. I know a lot of you know about GNS3, which relies on Dynamips, which is an iOS emulator. This is one of the most phenomenal products that I've seen in a long time that allows you to truly emulate, not simulate uh, Cisco gear because it boots the real iOS. My thoughts on that, I have to go back to when I was learning CCNP. I would have, it would have been kind of a disservice to me 
if I would have had GNS3 back then because there's just something about seeing the routers, plugging it in, connecting things. I mean, now, there, I will say there is a point at which you go, okay, I've done enough physical cabling. I know what these routers look like. I know how they connect and all that. But there, th there's a point that you'll reach. But when you're first getting into the CCNP, uh, uh, well, I can speak for myself. I wasn't there. It was really valuable for me to actually have some gear that I could connect up. And then once you get that level of experience where you're like, okay, now I remotely manage everything and I'm totally comfortable doing it, at that point, roll out GNS3. With all that being said, I wish you well into your CCNP journey. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.